Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent guest, leader and episode for you. But before I go ahead, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel. Also share with your communities in healthcare. Uh, also let me acknowledge our partners, our series partner Fujifilm Healthcare and our industry partner Isaac Care. But without further ado, let me introduce you to Howard Rosen. He's a CEO at Nova Insights and the founder of LifeWire Corporation. Howard, how are you? Wonderful. Great to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for accepting the invite. We have been in a few events together, right? We have over the past several years now, yes. Yeah, we're talking before the recording about the previous situation with the pandemic. We've done a lot of digital work together. So thank you so much for being in here. Oh, it's my pleasure. I look forward to our discussion. And today we are here to discuss the healthcare of the future. And the first question that I have for you, Howard, is where do you think we are with health technology? Give us an overview, please. Well, it's interesting because uh, those of us who've been involved in digital health for quite a number of years know there's been a lot of solutions available. And it's been you know, challenging to describe it nicely to have the providers do some of the uptake and the health system do some of the uptake because they're sort of going, well, there's no interest. Well, then in the past 24 months or so, there was a tremendous interest for a whole number of reasons. And there was a lot of uptake and utilization. And then now we've had the past six months when you know last year since we had what 41 billion dollars in the united states alone invested in digital health and also in this past year in the past six months has been a tremendous decrease in utilization or supposed utilization and in an interest and investment in that area a lot of the times the again health system providers are saying well there's no interest i think what's important to understand is a huge difference between the word interest and the word desire Perhaps the patients don't have an interest because they don't have the interest in the solutions or how the solutions are being provided to them. But just as they have in other industries, I think there remains a tremendous desire among patients and stakeholders to utilize a lot of the digital solutions. So I think we've had the past you know, 24 months in particular supercharge in the kinds of solutions that are available. And But again, I think we've gone back to that world of push a little bit pushback with the health systems and providers because it is a different different way of doing things and there's a lot of still you know continually reluctance to do those things brilliant oh well, that's a fantastic insight about we forced to behave and adopt things in a different way and now kind of things are start to stagnate a bit and back to normal that's a fantastic insight thank, thank you so much for that that leads really nicely actually to the second question which is with the pandemic, we saw an increase in investment and also uptake of the remote and um, uh, digital technologies. But what does it mean in practical terms? Well, I, I think what it means is, and what it demonstrated was, again, the desire amongst the patients to utilize these types of solutions or enablers, frankly, in terms of enable the better healthcare. Um, and it was a chance, frankly, to supercharge the kinds, you know, just a taste of some of the kinds of things you can do. You mentioned you know, wearables and other devices in terms of what information they can provide. And, and I use the word information because you got to go from data to information. And I think this was the first step when you actually saw data being used as information and helping some of the healthcare. So I thought, it, so it was really, you know, unintentionally a great pilot program for a lot of digital health solutions and approaches to seeing what can work. And I think provides now the base as to where we can go with that, take those lessons learned, and now let's build on that to actually provide the healthcare and utilizing the solutions that actually work. Because frankly, as you know, there are a number of solutions that look great, sounded great, but didn't quite provide the uh, value that they're supposed to. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Howard. And, and you mentioned the data, the information, uh, uh, data translated into information, which is a critical point. I remember back in the days, with the inception of digital health, people were complaining, the innovators and some of the stakeholders, we didn't have enough information, we didn't have enough data. How can we acquire more data from wearables, medical devices? How can we get more things on our 
uh, platforms to run analytics? How can we blend different uh, data sets? And now mm. I hear quite a lot of complaints, not complaints, but challenges in the industry about having too much data. How can we get rid of the data that we don't need? If it's in cardiology, we only need these two variables. We don't need everything else. So now we're yeah. entering a different phase with new challenges of interoperability, of data like security, silos. Everything is still a, a, a big challenge. As you know, digital health is actually multifaceted. It, it's so many variables and things to consider that it's impossible to solve everything in one go and have a solution that does it all. So, yeah, exactly. it's, a, it's, it's still a, a very challenging environment, but, it, but great. It, it, well, it, it is. And, and, and yet you brought up the point in terms of just because you have data does not mean it's a good thing. And it's also what is the quality of the data? Is it good data? Is it not good data? You know, you use wearables as an example. The early days of wearables, terrific. You know, we're talking five, 10 years ago, but they historically weren't necessarily accurate. However, what was really good about them was they're 100% inaccurate the same way all the time. So in fact, what you could do is not necessarily measure the data as it was, but you measure the change in the data and that actually became valuable information. So it's also understanding the data that you have as to how that can translate. And as you said, which pieces of data are actually valuable for what you're trying to solve at that time. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, our, uh, come to the third and last question for you, which is, can you share with us some two or three trends that are set to impact the healthcare of the future? Yeah, well, the, 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 and they all kind of, obviously, the three, the thoughts are all sort of tied together. But obviously, one thing that has happened is patients have now, and, and, the, and stakeholders, because when I say patient, patients, it's really not just unifying patient. You've got the entire healthcare, you know, the patient journey, the healthcare system, where you have different stakeholders involved. So you have clinicians involved, providers, you've got nurse, nurses involved, you've got lab techs, they're all part of that. And I'm seeing that that's the larger piece of it all. So I think the, the first comment is what I think you're, we're going to find is for successful solutions or transformations, however you want to look at that, it's going to be the involvement of that much larger ecosystem in the solution itself because what a patient wants is different from what a clinician wants, which is different from what the lab tech wants, but they all need to be part of that process. And understanding that is going to be, is going to be crucial as a trend going forward because they've all become more sophisticated. Again, we had a massive 24 months of just <laughs> crash course and all these things, and now they've become much more sophisticated, both what they like and what they don't like, what's valuable is not valuable. So really probably the biggest trend that I'm seeing is collaboration and earlier collaboration with those stakeholders in the solution sets that is most for the for what you're trying to solve. And similarly, I think we all we've all known it uh, for years, but again, we saw the demonstration. A digital solution on its own is not as valuable as a digital solution in conjunction with other solutions. So again, I think back to the same theme, I think what we're going to see more because it's necessitated is a collaboration and a coming together of more of these solutions together to provide that, that, that value set, that ecosystem of, of value. Because as you said, digital health is, well, it's health. You know, one of these days we'll get rid of the word digital and it's just health. And it is absolutely multifaceted. And there's so many confounding confounding factors that you need all these various pieces to come together and hence a collaboration more amongst these types of solutions brilliant Howard. what a nice way to to round up thank, thank you so much <laughs> uh, you know i didn't invent this phrase but collaboration is the new currency i heard it somewhere someone else and and now but it's very very true because even a few years ago when you tried to collaborate and if you try to do things on your own, you don't have the expertise, you don't know about certain areas, you don't have, you know, so we need each other, you know. And yes. I was talking to a, um, a very good contact in the United States for a specific project. They might need to use three or four different wearables. And that on its own is just mind blowing because a few years ago, first of all, not many people are doing studies with wearables. Now they're mm -hmm. becoming more popular. You actually need different devices for different things so only in that if collaboration is not in place you can't get off the ground in the first place anyway so 
Exactly. And, and as we, and we, uh, you know, category, we as innovators, we can go to a certain point, but ones who have the best information are those who are in the ground floor of it all, which again is the patient, the clinician, the nurse, the lab tech. And we need that input because we can go to a certain distance. You know, what, one of the things I did very early on with my solutions was, you know, from my previous life, actually, <laughs> as most people in health IT, my first career was actually producing film and television. But what I took from all that was actually doing focus groups. And so whenever we had a solution, we do a focus group of the end users and 100% of the time it would be good, but not great. And they look at us like we're crazy. So what do you mean you're communicating this way? We want this mm -hmm. and allowed us to refine that because as much as we think we have an understanding, the best person to have an understanding is the actual person using it and involving that is the core. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I we come to the end of the episode. I'm not sure if you check my videos, but I finish all my episodes with a, a funny thing, which is one minute of fame. You can mention anything, personal life, family, achievements. You can mention that you are in a different, nice, remote place in Canada. You, you can mention anything yeah. whatsoever. Down to you, our to round up. One minute of fame. Well, as I, as I was actually, we were discussing beforehand, I was sort of a little, maybe looked a little rushed because coming to, to do this interview and this discussion, I, uh, I escaped up north. Uh, to Northern Ontario, uh, Canada, uh, just for, for a bit of a break. And we live on an island and I don't have good internet connection. So we had to, I had to rush to actually another cottage that has a better connection. And on the way there, the bro boat broke down. So I'm busy bailing and, and paddling to get here on time because we had a scheduled time for 10 o'clock. Oh, brilliant. Uh, uh, you're, a true, you're a true problem solver innovator, you know, found a solution yeah. and you know, that's a great example of the times that we live, we're working remotely and doing things. I would appreciate your time, your magnificent insights, your expertise, your participation and collaboration in the industry. We are a proof of that because we've done things together in the past 18 months. So before I round up, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so very much. I, I really enjoyed the discussion. Brilliant. To all our viewers and the listeners, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, I'm going to post Howard's details in here, his LinkedIn and the, his socials. Feel free to connect with him. Ask him questions about the digital health industry. He's very active and hands-on and he's got expertise to help you with. And to finalize, let me acknowledge our series partner, Fujifilm Healthcare, and our industry partner, Isaac Kerr. And I'll see you all next week.